Well, that sure isn't a pleasant sight. That right there is rust, a type of fungus that attacks certain types of fruit trees. And it is not pleasant looking, almost alien. Luckily, there are ways to deal with it. Now, before we get any further into the video, a little bit of a disclaimer. If you're dealing with quite a lot of trees, you're probably going to have to resort to a different method. Picking individual infected fruits, especially with extra caveats to prevent the spread of the fungal spores, is kind of labor intensive. So this is more for just a few trees, wild edibles that you may find and want to reduce the amount of rust on them so you get to enjoy more fruits or a couple of prized apple trees, perhaps. If you had a whole lot of trees, like you were cultivating apples, you would probably need to use a different control method as a base, like fungicide. Although it's not 100%, and you may want to resort to this method in tandem with that to try and keep the rust populations at as low as you possibly can. The first thing you'll need is a big leaf. This is to encase the infected fruit and prevent its spores from spreading via the wind, which is how it infects new plants. I usually use either dock or mullein because they're introduced, but any big leafed plant will work. Now these leaves are more or less single or double use, so you'll need something to store everything that you've collected. So I usually use a brown paper bag for this, mostly because it's combustible, which is going to be important later. And as these are fruit trees, you'll probably need a ladder. So there's a particularly nasty one. You can see the rust spores spreading. I don't think it can technically infect the same species without going through some kind of cycle. It needs to like have an intermediate host of a juniper tree. But uh, I'm still going to pick both of them at once because, you know, that rust still gets out into the environment. And uh, I really don't want it to. So you can see you sort of pinch it so that it doesn't spread and then sort of crumple it up. And this just prevents those rust spores from getting out into the wind. If you were to just pick it like this, you'd get it all over your fingers, it'd get into the wind, and uh, this just prevents that. Now this can go in the brown paper bag and then it's ready to be thrown in wholesale into a fire. And speaking of those intermediate hosts, this is the most common one, Eastern Red Cedar. And after you have handled the rust from those fruit trees, you cannot touch this before basically sanitizing yourself, you know, washing your hands with soap and water. In addition, in the fall, you're going to want to give every single one of these trees you can find a good look over and get rid of any rust nodules you find because that's going to control the fungus at both stages of its life cycle. The rust fungus basically bounces from fruit tree to juniper, so it's a good rule of thumb. You can probably touch fruit tree to fruit tree, but you don't go from pruning or handling juniper to fruit tree or vice versa. Now as for what types of fruit trees the rust fungus goes after, the service berry I showed before is a very common wild example, native to the area, but there's also the very common and introduced and cultivated apple trees that it likes to go after. I think the rust is often called cedar apple rust for that reason. Now I don't know if this is one generalist species of fungus that attacks both service berry and apple and other related fruits, or if it's multiple specific species that target each individually, but I'm going to lean on the first one. That's at least what it seems in my experience. Also, even with the latter, some of these are probably going to be a little hard to reach, so don't be afraid to pull it down to your level a little bit and manhandle it a bit. The tree can almost certainly take it, especially if it already has somewhat of a bend, as fruit trees often do. All right, that looks like a good haul. Now comes the fun part basically want to smush this down as compact as you can possibly get it and now once it's in a tight little package toss it into the fire and there we go now you're going to want to let this burn completely to ash because chances are there's still a couple of the fruits down under there and they can take a little bit longer to actually catch fire because they are more or less mostly water also, don't be like me and try to rush it. Try to get a good bed of coals going before you throw the bag in, otherwise you might have to restart the fire from a single ember. Which, don't get me wrong, is great practice, but uh, not the easiest thing in the world when it just rained last night. Anyway, 
As always, I hope you learned something and enjoyed, and I wish you the best. Till next time.